Hello and welcome to Pisgah Health Today. My name is Angela Owen. It's my privilege to host this program brought to you by the Pisgah Health Foundation. The Pisgah Health Foundation is a public 501c3 charity founded in 2019 by a board of seven caring individuals committed to improving the health, wellness, and lives of Western North Carolina residents. Our special guest today is Kieran Rowe, who is the Executive Director of Conserving Carolina. Welcome to our program today, Kieran. Thanks so much, Angela. Glad to be here with you. We are excited to have you with us today. Before Kieran joined Conserving Carolina, he was, um, he's been there with them since 1999. Did I get that correctly there? Yes. So I'm reading through here. And he was the first full-time staff person uh, hired by Conserving Carolina. He helped grow the organization into a strong force for con conservation in the region. With the merger of CMLC and the Pacolet, did I say that for now? properly there, Area Conservancy in July 2017, Kieran led an organization that has conserved a combined total of 45,000 acres in Henderson, Polk, Transylvania, and parts of neighboring counties, and has partnered with public agencies to create and expand places such as DuPont and Headwater State Forest, Chimney Rock State Park, Green River Game Lands, and Pisgah National Forest. Kieran comes to us with a bachelor's in anthropology and MLS in library and information science from Rutgers University. He has completed the whole thinking leadership program with the Center for Whole Communities and the Conservation Finance Boot Camp at the Yale Center for Business and the Environment and was a participant in the 2012 White House Conference on Conservation. He swords, serves on the boards of the Asheville Buncombe Community Land Trust, the Mills River Partnership, and the Buncombe County Land Conservation Advisory Board. A great depth of experience that he brings to the program today and to Conserving Carolina. Why don't you start, Kieran, by telling us a little bit about Conserving Carolina? Thank you, Angela. Well, yeah, just as your sort of introduction of me kind of touched upon, uh, Conserving Carolina is a local nonprofit land conservation organization. Uh, we were newly christened under that name after our merger, as you just mentioned, of two organizations, Carolina Mountain Land Conservancy, which I was running at the time, and the Packlet Area Conservancy, which was based in Polk County for many years. And so now with that merger, we have this three county region that we largely focus upon. Henderson, Transylvania, and Polk counties, a little bit on the neighboring counties. And we work in that area with all kinds of partners, private landowners, local governments, uh, other organizations to protect the, the beautiful natural places that make our region special, that make it great in terms of quality of life for the folks that live here and make it an attractive place for visitors to come visit. Um, so we, uh, we use a variety of tools to conserve land um, and we work a lot, as I said, with local governments to uh, create new parks and trails and greenways. We'll be talking some about a, a partnership with the city of Rivard here in a few minutes and an expansion of their greenway network in the city of Rivard. So we love to do that. We love to both conserve land. Once we do that, we we manage it, steward it, make sure that uh, the resources that we've protected are thriving. And in some cases we'll do restoration to restore degraded areas and bring them back to a more natural state. And then we also wanna find ways to get people out to see firsthand the properties we conserve uh, to develop the appreciation that, that comes when you you know, get into nature and in especially in our part of the world where there's just so many beautiful places to see, so many wonderful natural resources. We're blessed with a wealth of public land existing already, those um, national, state, forest, local parks that you mentioned already. And on that base that we already have that great foundation, we try to work with other landowners to, to buffer and protect these places and, you know, just to preserve the character of this community uh, that many of us really treasure and value. That is tremendous. And the partnerships that you're speaking of says a lot about the organization, that ability to work across the private sector along with the public sector says so very much. 
Kieran, tell us a little bit about what the grant from Pisgah Health Foundation is allowing you to do in serving Western North Carolina. Yeah, well, first of all, we are really, really grateful to the Pisgah Health Foundation for the grant award they made us back in 2019. Uh, the grant will help us work with the city of Brevard to add an extension on their existing network of paved greenway trails in, in the city. Uh, and a particular segment we'll be working on and being able to uh, develop with this grant from the foundation uh, is to extend what they call their Estatoe Trail, which is kind of the, the name they use for the, the greenway network in Brevard, uh, by creating an 870 foot section that will connect from Brevard's Main Street, where the, the trail currently ends, to the um, under development Mary C. Jenkins Community Center, which is uh, kind of at the heart of the Rosenwald neighborhood, the historically African American neighborhood in Brevard, right uh, beside what will become Tannery Park there. Uh, so the, the grant from the foundation will allow us to uh, obtain easements, uh, conduct surveys and engineering, and then construct the trail so that we have that new link from Main Street down to that important uh, community uh, nearby downtown. I love the idea of connecting the community and I love walking by the current greenways and seeing people who are out there already walking and to think about reaching into the Mary C. Jenkins area and the Rosenwald area and, and bringing to life, you know, in this time when we have such challenges from a health standpoint with the pandemic that's running around the world right now, getting out and being active and healthy and creating community, all of those pieces are so important with the social determinants of health. Are you seeing that impact through some of the work that you guys are doing there with Conserving Carolina? Like, how would you describe what you're seeing relative to people taking advantage of understanding the, the importance of conservation? Yeah. Uh well, you're exactly right. I mean, greenways and trails really address a number of community needs. And especially this year, 2020, we've seen, you know, the unprecedented situation where the COVID-19 is restricting a lot of what we can do. Um, but getting outdoors, getting into nature, being outside is something that is, is not only permitted, but really great for us, you know, and I think there's been a, a developed appreciation. I know that it just seems like nature is more present in, in my mind personally in this year, the passing of the seasons. Um, I, I just have this sense that people, you know, have a new perspective on things. There are many things we can't do, but appreciating and getting outdoors and getting healthy recreation outside it remains among the things we can do. And I, I don't know if you visit places like uh, Fisgah National Forest or DuPont State Forest, but uh, they were already extremely popular, but this year it's just overwhelming. Uh, the, the parking lots are overflowing. If you don't get there early enough in the day, you, you probably won't get a, a parking spot. Right. People are almost loving these places to death. And so, I mean, Ultimately, I think that's a good thing because I, I think these places are wonderful treasures and uh, and it is a great way for all of us to you know, get some healthy recreation. Um, I, I commend the, the foundation for its willingness to broaden its definition of community health to include things like uh, trails and greenways. Uh, I think it is great to the public health to have nearby places where they can, you know, maybe not even get into a car, but nearby their homes and communities, get outside, get on a trail that connects them to natural places and to places in the community that they want to get to. So um, it, it really does, like you said, it, it not only... Uh, conserves and creates these opportunities, but it really, in some ways, I think does create community, like you said earlier, it gives, it 
there are places in, in the communities that we work where I really feel like the parks are the heart of the community. It's where the community awesome. comes together and there's just a sense of, 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 of you know, that, that creates the sense of what that community is about when people are outside and uh, seeing each other and, and uh, making connections in places like the, the Greenway that we look forward to creating uh, there in Duvar. Having that appreciation for the, the nature around us, the beauty around us, and, and doing that, as you've just so well said, in the community components. Karen, what else would you like our viewers to know about Conserving Carolina? How can they get involved? How can they find you, get, come alongside you, and support you? Yeah, well, thank you for asking that. Uh, for, I'd send them to our website, first of all, conservingcarolina.org, which tells you a lot more about what we're doing, current projects across our region, um, and has a whole variety of ways that folks can get involved. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers in a whole variety of ways from getting outside and helping us control invasive species or uh, maintain trails that we uh, help to manage uh, to helping us create events. You know, we have uh, gatherings and in normal times at least, you know, hopefully we'll get to an end of this current coronavirus situation and get back to uh, the kind of events and community gatherings and educational programs that we like to, to host. And we, we always need volunteers to help us uh, with, with putting those th kinds of things together. So we'd love to, to, to get folks who are interested, get in touch with us and get involved that way. Uh, we're always looking for memberships and, and local contributions. We have a diverse mix of funding sources from private grants to public grants, but the real base of our support locally is the members, the people that live in those counties and, and nearby who pay us annual dues because they support what we do and that really helps to make everything else that we do possible. So we'd love for folks to, to get involved as members of Conservative Carolina. Lots of ways to engage with you in the organization. Well, Kieran, on behalf of the Board of Directors at Pisgah Health Foundation, let me just say thank you to you and the other leaders there who are working so diligently through Conserving Carolina to bring such great things about for Western North Carolina, appreciation for conservation and the connectivity through greenways and all of the things that you mentioned. We are greatly appreciative of you and the work that you're doing. And thank you for taking time to be with us today on Pisgah Health Today. Thank you so much, Angela. And thank you so much again to the Pisgah Health Foundation for their generous support of this project. We really appreciate it. Of course. We also would like to thank Wildflower Media for their creative and technical support in bringing this program to our viewers. Additionally, I want to say a special thank you to the Board of Directors and staff at the Pisgah Health Foundation for their diligent work, as well as to the Physicians Roundtable. All of these wonderful people doing so much to serve us here in Western North Carolina. Until we see you on the next Pisgah Health today, be well, stay well. <laughs>